Hey everyone, this is Jason, and I'm going to be giving you a quick walk through the capabilities of JSON Modeler. Um, what we're going to do in this video is um, I'm just going to create a quick uh, Xcode project with a simple table view um, that fetches um, some data from an API, and it then will take the data, push it through JSON Modeler generated classes, and we'll take those classes and then we'll um, get the data out of it and populate our table view. So um, I have my table view already set up here and um, let me just clean it. And so we have our prototype cells. I'm using a basic cell type. The identifier is basic cell. And um, it has a counterpart. Um, called table view controller and the uh, class name for this table view is table view controller. So I've already kind of pre-set up a little bit of this stuff, um, just kind of speed things up. But um, this is pretty much the boilerplate code we get when we create a table view controller from uh, Xcode. And I put a couple of um, networking functions down here that we'll get to in a minute. Um, we're going to be grabbing the data from JSON placeholder. Um, this pretty cool site. It's got like uh, some good um, endpoints that you can hit if you just want to kind of jump in and start testing out part of your uh, networking and um, your model stack in your uh, in your project. And we're going to use the um, users endpoint. So um, it's going to it basically returns you know ten items it says. And if we go look at the data from the endpoint. Um, one of the reasons I chose this one was because it did have some nest data in there, so I can show you actually how easy it is to, um, you know, consume, you know, a decent sized graph with a JSON modeler and have it just spit out all the code for you and just do everything. Um, so we got the top level user here, and then we hit the address, which has a geo in it, and then the user also has a company has some properties so um, it's a pretty good example pretty simple so it's uh, it's easy to understand so this is what the data is we're going to be looking at and so I'm going to copy this endpoint link and I'm going to go over to JSON modeler now one thing that we've added in 1.2 is we've added a rest client um, before you had to take and paste your JSON manually in this left panel here and then that would generate all your code for you. Um, now we have this nice REST client, so I can take that endpoint and just paste it in. Um, we support all the verbs uh, that you would need. Um, probably won't need that many outside of GET, um, but they're all there. Uh, if you have to, you can you can set uh, request body uh, parameters, um, headers, and you can also do basic and, and digest auth too. So it's pretty cool. For this example, though, we're just going to be using this get on this simple endpoint and hit submit. And then what it's going to do is it's going to give you a preview of what the response data looks like. And it's basically exactly what we looked at on the, uh, on the web page. So I'm going to hit OK. And now what it's done is it's taken the data and it's pasted it in here for you. And it's going to generate you know, the necessary uh, models based off of the data. Um, and so let's go through some of this part really quick. Um, we'll start at the bottom. Uh, we got some checkboxes and text boxes down here. Constructors is, um, this is going to be, um, it's going to control all your constructors per class. You can turn these off one at a time or you can you know, turn them all off down here. Um, let's switch over also to Swift class. Um, you don't want to do that probably uh, because this is kind of some of the whole point of using this is to get um, all of your model creation for you uh, automatically and by removing the constructors you have to make it yourself so that's what that's for but you know you can remove it if you want if you have some need um, utility methods is really all that is right now is just um, the inverse so it's making the um, the properties themselves um, in a dictionary format so it'll go through and just um, you know make those available and I leave those in there as well um, the root class name so we can think of that being 
um, either sometimes if it's not an array, um, you want to name the enclosing class here something. Um, in this case, it's an array, so I don't really want to name it an array, and it's going to actually represent what's in the array. So in this case, it's going to be user, um, because I hit the user's endpoint, and you know, I'm rendering user data eventually. So uh, I'm going to make the root class name user, and that's going to change this box up here. And we're going to see that um, you know I have all my uh, properties and constructor and utility methods. Um, one thing to note, when you first start JSON modeler up, it's going to ask you for access to your address book. It does that so it can fill in that line right there. Um, you can deny it, and if you do, uh, when it generates the code, it's going to look like that. So it's up to you. Um, I I said yes, so I could get you know the name and everything in there. And this is pretty standard with with Xcode. So um, again, just leave it in there. Um, but you can take it out if you want. Um, so back to this area down here, the class prefix is you know your usual um, couple letter prefixes like. Uh, you know, MZ, and so, whoops, um, that's going to prefix all of your classes, um, you know, like we have been doing in Objective-C for years. Um, Swift, obviously, or implicitly namespace, so you don't have to do that. Um, but if you're working with Objective-C and you need that, then that's what that box is for. I'm going to take it out. And as soon as I lose focus, um, everything changes back. Now we have a parent class name here, and this is basically um, what all of your models can be derived from or inherit off of. Um, so in some cases, if you're working on an existing project and um, you know you have like a base model or something that has a bunch of you know methods that do specific things that you want to um, you know give access in, in all of your uh, subclasses, then uh, that's where you fill this in. So you can put in uh, base model and loop focus and it's going to fill it in for all of your models up here um, in this case i don't need it so i don't have a base model so I'm take it out lastly um, we have we have a couple we have some variations of swift and objective c uh, styles that you can generate as well as a couple of java um, Something to note on Swift side, since I'm working pretty much exclusively in Swift nowadays, um, is you know you can generate structs. Um, so uh, you know we're going to instruct user um, core data. It's kind of cool. Um, this will do all of your uh, managed object and NS managed and um, set up all of your entity descriptions and everything correctly for initialization. So we don't set up the entire core data stack for you. You're going to have to obviously have that in there. But if you're using core data, um, you can select this option and you know, you'll get all the um, necessary boilerplate for those models, um, at least to create them. And uh, you know, then, of course, there's Objective-C and everything. I'm just going to continue with this demo. And we're just going to use Swift class because we don't need anything special for it. Um, and one final note is up here we have a valid JSON structure. So it's in the green and we're good, but if I wanted to not make it good, um, you know, we check it and uh, we will not let you save any of the models until the uh, JSON structure is, is valid. So um, that does work and uh, it's saying that for a reason. Okay, so I've generated all my classes here. Um, you know, I got a user, company, uh, let's see, address, and geo. So looks about right. User, uh, address, geo, and company. So I'm going to hit save. And this is my Xcode project. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to create a new folder in it. I'll call it models. Create. I'm going to save those in there. And I get a nice little message saying everything was saved. So now I'm going to go back to Xcode. And I'm going to go add files. And there's my models folder. So I'm going to go in the models folder. I'm going to select all these and I'm going to say add. And then lastly, to make it uh, nice and clean, I'm going to group all these. Uh, call them model. 
models. And so now I have my models in my Xcode project and um, they're all in a nice little group and they're on the file system in a folder. So let's go to our table view controller. Oops. And the first thing we want to do is we want to provide the data source. So uh, I'll call this users. Oops. Um, this guy. Okay. And we're going to have one section and we're going to be returning the user count for the number of rows. Uh, users count. Cool. Next is we go to our cell. So remember we had a basic cell. Um, we're just going to populate the title label. Um, so uh, that's all we're going to do right now. So I'm going to go back here and we're going to say um, uh, let user equal users next path through. I get the right user out for the cell. Um, we're going to say cell dot text label text equals. And let's do like a user ID and we'll do username. Uh, I guess, yeah, okay. Uh, user dot name and let's just show the email as well. So we'll do user.email. Okay, it's probably not, not all going to fit in there, but you know, again, this is just to demonstrate that um, you know, we're pulling these uh, bits of data out. So this should be good for the cell. Um, I've grabbed my user. I've uh, populated the text label. Should be good to go. So now I have these networking um, functions that I added from before, and the first one is my basic simple uh, networking call to go fetch those users and then um, populate them in the in the data source array that we have um, up at the top of the class. Um, so I know that my data returned uh, is an array. So this is my top level. And so what I've already done is I've already said what my JSON result is. Um, and I've casted it to an array. So now, uh, now that I'm done fetching, I am going to add all of those to the um, data source array. So we're going to iterate over them. So we're going to say for let's uh, user dictionary uh, in JSON results. And I'm going to create the user object. So let user equal user from dictionary. And this user dictionary will need to cast. So as an as dictionary. Okay. Boom. The model's created. Um, and the last thing I need to do is append it to the array. So then I need to um, say self dot uh, users append user. Done. That's it. Um, I've purposefully not used the third party networking uh, library here because um, for the purposes of this demo, I feel like um, this is so simple that um, I don't need it. And frankly, I've actually taken this networking code out from another project that I did that I generated about um, I think it was around seven or eight models off of an API. And um, I use this exact networking code, um, this exact same approach, and populated the models, and um, it works great. It's fast, and um, I don't have any issues with it. So you'll see if you download the sample project, um, you can go and look at this data, um, or this code, I mean, and, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, lastly, I should have mentioned this before, um, I just plugged in earlier the endpoint that we are using for this guy here. So that's what that is up there. That's our uh, user's API endpoint. And once this is done, uh, appending the users, it's gonna call this request complete, which is just another function that just reloads the table. So this should be it. 
Um, this is really all we need to um, get this thing displayed, so let me run it. And there we go, there's our 10 results. Um, we have ID, name, and email, and that was not very difficult at all to do. Um, it probably took me like another, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to set up this Xcode project, um, um, you know, behind the scenes before I did the video, but um, that's pretty straightforward and pretty simple, and it's kind of, it's why we made, you know, this tool, um, because, you know, we've, done this thing in the real world and we continue to work on um, iOS projects that, you know, do this exact same thing, fetch API, um, push stuff to an API and using JSON modeler for those kinds of things just takes like a ton of tedious, like boilerplate work um, and basically gets rid of it. And then, you know, we can focus on more of the actual implementation that we, you know, we want to show people and not, you know, spending a bunch of time, you know, hand coding a bunch of models. Um, so this works, we have it on projects and um, we use it in real life. Uh, lastly, we have some, looks like some warnings here. This is um, Swift 2 compiler stuff. So uh, we'll have a, a version out that will have this updated um, soon. Uh, but, you know, simple fixes and just making sure that everything's happy with Swift 2. So that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed this and um, come over to the webpage and um, you can, you know, leave support questions um, and, uh, you know, leave a review on the App Store if you like it. And uh, thanks for watching this and good luck with your projects. Cheers.